All right, let's see. I've uh, I've made a big mess of trying to make the video in Blender. It seems to be taking quite far too long, so I'm going to start the whole project over in Camtasia. And that's going to be what I'll have to do to do this. So I'm going to try to replicate what I've done in Blender in Camtasia. And this way you'll get a full walkthrough of how I do the editing in Camtasia, at least. Um, to start with, all of my files are in here. And I've got to take those files. I don't need these, actually. I need these, this, this one, and then these. And i got to bring them all in the bin. So actually what I'll do is select everything and then select the others. And there we go. And bring those into the media bin. It's going to take a while because there were a lot of files, but there they are. And the first thing we do, of course, is take the video file and put it on a track. I like to put it on track three, which I will call, oh, you added a high frame rate. Do you want to change the editing frame rate to 60 frames per second? Keep project. I'll keep it at 30 frames per second. All right. So hopefully it all works, though. Because this was the big problem with, um, with Blender. And I'm going to call this track um, audio video. And, uh, audio video. So that's my bass track there. And I'm going to scrunch, scroll down here. And let's see. Moving pictures that actually objects for these lectures. By the end of the 1800s. Okay, so we'll start there. We'll cut this, chop it up here, and delete it, and then move this over here. And so when this starts, it'll say. Moving pictures that actually move okay, us. Okay, so that's our first step, is getting the beginning of our audio video track. The next thing I do is I go to Crop over here and crop out everything that I don't want to have in the shot, which means mostly everything like that, and then move the character or if I want him to start, let's say in the center. I leave enough room on the sides for the moving of the arms in and out. So let me go about like that. And then save. The next step is to apply to this the video effects, which is under visual effects, and drop down onto the timeline, remove a color, and then come over here to the color picker and pick a color near the body and then change the tolerance and a little bit of the softness to get a decent key. That's the first step. Then the next thing is to take, just to see how well that key is playing, is to take a piece of video that we might want to put in, like this moving pictures thing, and I'm going to drop that down on track one. Now that's a moving picture. Moving pictures that actually move us to. Okay. Um, moving. If I want to keep that, moving. I've got to double it because that's the end of that track. I can't pull on it. That movie's only that long. So I hit, um, I hit Control C and then Control V. And what did that do? Nothing. Okay. I could copy and then move this over and then paste and then drag it back, and that makes it a little bit bigger. Picture books could some... All right. Now, I prepared a whole bunch of images in the failed attempt to use Blender. So if I go back and look at what I've got in here, 
I can see that uh, in the Blender animation, I also had this, but I'm not going to use that right now. So I have some assets in there. So the first kind of assets that I have were things relating to the um, my uncle Seamus. And it seems like this one disappeared. So that's the problem with using this uh, using Blender. Blender works, as you can tell. Some other people to but it, quote the title it's of very book slow. Uncle Seamus it's Clay, a lot of uh, where I Pluto. computers resources. So I'm going to try to do everything in this Camtasia instead. And one of the things to make it more rapid is you kind of use these markers to mark out places where you want to do stuff. And the also thing is you should go and find areas where the video gets bad and come out. of human history was punctuated with an exclamation point, an evolutionary uh, saltation. Let's see, what did I say there? The stasis of the past. The stasis. So you take out these bad sections of audio where there were mistakes and you cut them and then you go back and find where you made your mistake an evolutionary which might have been here stasis right so that's the same same thing and i cut that out because this part here the stasis of the past the stasis in here the stasis of the so it gets this gets deleted and moved over and it was important that i did my green screen on the whole thing because I'm keeping those properties when I chop it up. So as you can see, if I were to put this underneath here, the key is pretty good. So that's why we have that in there. Now let's see what else happens here. What's the context for these lectures? So there's a lot of space in there that we need to cut out. And there's space here. Slide this over, and then there's a little bit too much space here. And up to here. That'll tighten things up a little bit. And so. By the end of the 1800s, the now because I've got cuts, which look like jump cuts, in between the things that I'm saying, I am going to put in transitions. And I just drop fades whenever I do that so that What's the context it blends of these in a little bit. By the end of the 18th. OK. That just helps so it doesn't look so jarring. Now over here, we got to, again, stitch this back together. The stasis of the past few thousands. Stasis and equilibrium. The stasis. That was what I had written over here. Stasis and equilibrium, and I want to recreate that. But before that, I had two images, an image of Pluto in there as well. So I want to find that and mark it. By my uncle Seamus Culhane. There it is, my uncle Seamus Culhane. Oh, by my uncle. And I want to take this, and this is where I'm going to drop a marker in. And if I double click on it, I can come up and put name in here. James Colhane goes in there. And then James Colhane, who animated Pluto and the dwarves in snow. Who animated Pluto. Pluto. And actually there was something about talking animals. And those talking there. Talking. Talking. Oh. Hey. That's what you like, right? Okay. Okay. Now that I have those marked, I come in and I grab the asset that I've created, which is this one here, and I drop it in. And when I play over it, it appears. And unlike Blender, it's very easy to simply grab the thing on screen in Camtasia. That's why it's so uh, so much better. Uh, as opposed to in Blender, where you can do all these fine manipulations, but you can't do it with click and drag. And so it takes an enormous amount of time to do this. So 
I'll just build up my overlay images, and then I'll put my underlay images afterwards inside. So I'll keep going in. So I'm not sure exactly how long I want that to last, but I suggest you mark up and then go back and do it. So <clears throat> actually, we can put this one. This one would look better underneath so that because it's not my elbow is not interfering with the face will make it obvious that it's a screen. Whoops. Uh, by the way, you should lock what you're working on when you're working on it so that when you click, you don't interfere. But I'll, I'll put that one there. And I think I'm just going to keep talking animals and other people <coughs> right up on through. And I think it should also be larger when it comes in. But that's not interfering. And by the way, if you hold the shift key down, then you can stretch it. And here's a case where we might indeed, before we even get started, if we're going to do effects like this, we might as well move this track. In fact, move all these, give ourselves some more space. Or, or let's do this. Right click on here and say insert track below, creating another, another track one. That'll be our base track and bring that down there. And that gives us some room to work with. So you're going to be using these stretch tools a lot, this magnifying glass tool. But then also let me lift this up so we have more room to work. Okay. And <clears throat> so if I do this, and if I had this background, so let me copy this and paste it again. Copy it's control C, the sitting way. So what you'd see is then this is also, let's see, let me lock that. This one, can lock this for a second. This one would be behind his arm, my arm. And we have that. And then when we get to here, we have yeah, that. Pluto, Although why there's a transparency here that's very strange. Why is that? Did we change the opacity somehow on this character? No, he's a hundred percent. Maybe it's the tolerance or the softness? Yeah, it was the softness. So gotta check it out with different different images in the background. <coughs> All right. <clears throat> so let's go and listen to some other parts. This is the past few thousands of years. And of course, you also should be working with the with the script because the script is found in our in our instructor lecture. It's right there, and that can make editing a lot faster. So we're looking at. Lumiere Brothers and Edward Moybridge. Well, here's a couple things that we should use. And Thomas Edison. So those come before that. And I would be remiss not to put those luminaries in there. So Lumiere Brothers. There they are. And that's the famous uh, 1956 film. There we go. That probably that image is the best one to use for that and then call it Lumiere and as long as we're saving that in the same folder we're okay and then Moybridge that would be another another one to put Moybridge there's Moybridge Horse in Motion was the famous one and there's his book. Right there, save that image as Moybridge. This is the deep dive that you go on when you start making a video to illustrate a lecture, is that you really can learn an enormous amount. Actually, I think maybe male and female figure in motion, the human figure in motion. That's fine, the one that we have. 
And then we have in the script also Moybridge and Thomas Edison. Now, Thomas Edison's done a lot of things, so let's use for Edison, let's say Edison Motion Pictures. And Edison filmed The Great Train Robbery. That's a nice one, but it also would be good if we have... Ah, oh, there's the Edison Kinetoscope. So we can save that image as <clears throat> Edison. Notice, however, this comes out as a GIF TIFF. A GIF TIFF. You're going to have to change that name because it won't show up. GIF TIFFs are crazy stupid. So find your folder, and wherever you have, you can search for them. Search for star, where's the star? Star dot GIF TIFF. There's the GIF TIFFs. GIF TIFFs. Uh, so what you want to do is come in and change GIF TIFFs. All your GIF TIFFs, you can simply change them to JPGs. And then they'll work. It'll say it'll become unusable, but yes, you want to change it. Same thing with this, because otherwise you can't use them. I don't know where these extensions come from, but they're annoying. Maybe they think that people won't figure out how to change them, so they can't use their pictures and things. That's probably what they're trying to do, maybe. Um, I mean, this isn't a bad, bad image to use, too. Maybe I'll use this instead, because I like this. That's where I use my snipping tool, and then go the electrifying Edison. He's got these scopes there. So Edison 2. And this is as a portable network file or a JPEG. doesn't matter what you use for a snipping tool. So if we come back in here, then we can find Oh. Let's go back and see. There's Lumiere right there, so we can put that in and say Lumiere, and then. Edward Moybridge. Moybridge. The thing is, when it's when they come that quickly together, you might as well put them all together because it's too fast. <laughs> There's Edison right there. So you note, know, looking at this. In fact, I can't even get this one. This one here, I got to drag over. Edison, these things are so fast on each other's heels that you're better off, in this case, moving your cursor back to the Lumiere brothers and finding, let's find our Lumiere. I wish that you could just hit Control F and do Find. Oh, save video frame as. Um, but you can't. There's no way to, yeah, see, whatever I type in, there's no way to search in the media bin, which is a pain. You can go like this and then try to find the name, but they don't. Let's see if we. Yes, okay. There's just no way to search. At least not that I know of. I mean, if I put my cursor over here and I hit Control F, it doesn't do anything. It says city, say video frame as, and I put F, it doesn't go anywhere. If I put L, yeah. So it's not, it's not helping. So if you've named things right, then you can find stuff. But if not, I thought I had, maybe, let me make sure that where I saved <clears throat> my other images when I was using this, what did I save in the jazz? Well, it's supposed to go in the right place. So where are they? Let's go back in here and look. It says Edison 2, Moybridge, and Lumiere. Well, it says they're there. Uh, why doesn't 
this recognize that? Is it our GIF TIFF problem again? Because sometimes, see if I take this and drop this in, I can literally grab things from here and drop them in on the timeline. There's Lumiere. Yep. And here's a case where I would use the cropping tool to crop out a bit of that. And then I would use the shift key and shrink this up and get my Lumiere brothers there. I would get my Moybridge, which doesn't show up here either. So how strange that it doesn't show up here. So when that happens, then you'll have to, oh, Lumiere did show up. Now, well, now it does after I dragged it in, but my bridge doesn't. So again, I'm going to have to come up in here, take my my bridge picture, and drop it in. And let's see if I put the my bridge on this side. So they stack up nicely. This one here, let me make it a little bigger. And then uh, the Edison, the Edison one also doesn't show up here for some reason. Don't panic. You have other options. I'm going to take Edison there, drop it in, and then I'm going to move it behind me here and then stretch it up. Let's see if we can get the name Edison. No, apparently not. So maybe we move the Lumiere brothers, move Edison, whoops, or maybe we just move Culhane for this whole section and shrink him down. Just put him over on the sidelines here and then put the Lumiere brothers behind him. That works. So you'll make all these decisions about placement, where you want to put stuff. Like this would be nice to put right here. And because I talk about them in this order, it's better than to put my bridge and Edison like that. And then the electrifying Edison. Oops. Let's see how that plays. By the end of the 1800s, the innovations of the Lumiere brothers and Edward Boydridge. I might as well then take this right to the back of this. There's no reason to fade these things in. We'll give ourselves more time to read them and register them in there. And then we'll drop on here, transition, uh, fade on all these. And a fade, and let's see how long we want them in there. By the end of the 1800s, innovations of the Lumiere brothers and Edward Boydridge and Thomas Edison started making pictures move. Picture books. And I think for that, making pictures move. If we can get that Lumiere Brother clip, that would be really cool. Because it was, it was stated that people at that time, when they watched the, the train, Lumiere Brothers train, there's a GIF. Let's see what that GIF does. People watched that clip and they freaked out. They thought the train was going to hit them. So people say. So let's grab that GIF and see if it'll save without anything. Giffy.gif, maybe it will. I'll call it Lumiere.gif. 
and or maybe this is the one that everybody got scared of it's Charlie Chaplin gif I think we'll stick with the original although that's pretty good let's go with that one I'll call this train diff and we go back in here and let's see does it show up as train.gif train.gif no it doesn't so once again come back here and let's find our train somewhere in this folder star dot gif and there it is the train gif So let me drop this here. Now it's a short GIF. Let's see. Oh. All right, and we'll take this and we'll put the transition in between these. And let's see. Oh. Picture books, could come to life. Uh, picture books could somebody come suddenly come to life. Well, then the thing I would look for is to find that early Disney movie, Alice in the Looking Glass Disney. And we're talking about no, the early, early one. Okay, that's not what we want. Maybe it's just called Through the Looking Glass. No. Through the Looking Glass. Black and white. Hmm. It wasn't that. What was the first thing that Disney did? He did... Um, <clears throat> Looking Glass, Early Disney. Part of the hunt that we'll have to do. Through the mirror. Ah, that was through the mirror. But that's not really what we're going to do. It'd be first live action cartoon. And... First movie with humans in cartoons, and hookers are they? What? That's not true. That's not true. Ah, maybe this is what I should use the enchanted drawing. Let's see. From, From the Library, library of Congress. Congress. Ah, this is the Alice's in Wonderland I was looking for. That one. Yep. All right. So if I go to watch this on YouTube, then in order to download this, I'll see if it's downloadable using 4K video downloader, which I'll boot up. And I will take this link and copy it and go into 4K downloader and paste it. And we'll see if it downloads. It's a long time. Suddenly, maybe it's not going to download. We shall see. Can't parse this link. Okay, so we can't parse this link. It won't let us. So here's what we do. We stop capture in Camtasia. So another reason why using 
Camtasia is a little bit better than using Blender is because you can do screen captures with it. And that makes it a good software for educators and students anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've already got the screen, the whole screen being captured. So I'm going to go full screen with this and then hit play at the section that I want, which is, let's see. Let's have her come out the door. time for. So I guess that would work. Come in here and hit. And since we have now captured this, it should be here in this recording, which just happened uh, number three. Let's see if that's the one. Yep, that's it. So, so another, another reason. reason. Oh, there. And I'll take this and drop it in here. And I don't need me talking. And all I need is the part where she's on the elephant. There, we'll use that last bit there, up to there, and this. Bring it underneath the train. And let's see. Picture books could suddenly come to life. The Disney era of moving That's pretty good. Could suddenly come to life. The only thing is the audio here is now too loud. Not my audio, but the audio of this clip. And so what you do there is you right click on it and you write edit audio and you'll see a volume area. So click on it and then say add audio point and add audio point and I put four audio points in like so then I can take this one and bring it down and have it ramp up and then have it go down toward the end and I can stretch it so I have the fade in and the fade out of the audio and then when it plays the Disney era of moving storyboards and the comic books of so actually that was too short, so I'm going to have to move it over and bring it up here. And let's see. And I can have it fade out as the picture here fades in. So... Talking animals and other people. So this has got to either come in on top or it's got to fade in as this fades out. So I faded out the audio. Now I'm fading in the picture. Talking animals and other people to quote the title. All right. And actually, we don't need to fade the audio out that quickly. People. That came out way too quickly. Let's start fading it down that way. Let's make this come in a little bit earlier with a longer fade. Abby Hop books of living fables and of talking animals and other people to quote the title of a book by my uncle, Seamus Colhane. So here it's a problem because it's blocking his name. And I want the character of me to move into center again. 
So somewhere in this fade in, I will cut this. And then here I will move me over to there. But I will put in a fade in between here and here. And let's try this. Abbey comic books of living fables and of talking animals and other people to quote the title of a book by my uncle, Seamus Colhane, who animated the book by my uncle, Seamus Colhane, who animated Pluto. And that should go over there. Pluto. And keep this in there. And of course, our background went away, so it has to be repeated. So we can control C, copy it, move this over, and paste it. All right. That needs a fade too. I tend to use fades a lot to get things into comes in smoother. Pluto and the dwarves in Snow White was set into motion. Now the dwarves in Snow White, I think that they deserve a call out. My uncle did. Oh, no, I'm sorry, save. He did the high ho march, and I wonder if there's a high ho gif because that would be easier than downloading a whole piece. High ho gif. It's a graphic interface thing. Let's see, images, hi ho, gif. Let's see if that one does it. Yeah. That's my Uncle Seamus's work. So that one's easy to download. Save the link as, watch it, open it. And then save video as. An MP4 video, it's not a GIF at all, but okay. So I'll just call this Hi Ho, and now come in here and find Hi Ho. And if Hi Ho doesn't show up, do the same thing we did earlier because it doesn't show up. Interesting why it's not showing up, I cannot say. But let's now go back here and find Hi Ho. H-I-O, H-I-O. There it is. Just drag it in. You can drag it in here this time. Now it's in. Hi-ho, where are you? Here's hi-ho. So I can close this and take the hi-ho scene, which is short enough. And it's supposed to come after Pluto. Now it's going to come above Pluto. They come in at the same time, but I move this up to here, and again holding the shift key down, I can manipulate it a little better. And here maybe we could put in an effect like we could go to visual effects and put a border on it and make that border color yellow because that's the color of Pluto. It was there and then Make the thickness a bit thicker. That's not a good Pluto. Let's use the picker and get Pluto's color. There we go. And the other thing we can do is put a drop shadow in so it stands out a little bit from the other. See? See the drop shadow? Yeah, great. All right. So put in a bit of drop shadow, make it a little darker, a little more blurred. All right. And so we get that. Pluto and the dwarves in Snow White was a Pluto and the dwarves. Maybe that's Pluto and the dwarves. Let's see if he does this. Maybe Pluto and the dwarves in Snow White. And then put a fade on that. Drag this out. The stasis of the past few thousands of years. Oh. White was set into motion. 
I have to go out by that time there. Was set into motion. The stasis. Oh, he's got to come out too. And he should fade out with him. There. And then there should be a fade in between this one and this one. Fade in between those. Was set into motion. The stasis of the past few thousands of years. Okay, that's where I want to drop in the words stasis and equilibrium. So, I will go to annotations and I'm going to use the cartoon balloon. And I'm going to say stasis. I'm going to take another balloon. and equilibrium. Jesus of the past. Let's go again. And put a transition here. Or a behavior. I can do a fade behavior on this. The stasis of the past few thousands of years. Okay. The stasis of the past. Whoops, wrong. The stasis of the past few thousands of years. The equilibrium. This of the past few thousands of years. The equilibrium of the thinking out loud epics of human. <coughs> the equilibrium of the thinking out loud epoch, not epic. Change this to the spaces. The spaces of the past few thousands of years. I like the whole sentence. And maybe spaces here should be cal caps. Never know if people really understand what you're saying. History. Let's put that in caps. Equilibrium. Let's listen to this again. Thousands of years, the equilibrium of the thinking out loud. The stasis of the past few thousands of years, the equilibrium of the thinking out loud epics of human history. Now we need something to reflect that. thousands of years, the equilibrium of the thinking out loud. It shouldn't be this part here anymore, because we're not in the motion pictures. We're now in prehistory. So we need something that looks vaguely prehistoric. And we can either use a static image, or uh, we could, let's see, let's do, if we go back to our our Vidivo, and we go to our filters and we talk about only free clips, and then something that evokes prehistory. This kind of works. Oh, that works. But that's not equilibrium, really. Stasis and equilibrium. Let's see what this one looks like. Look like much of anything. That, that, that's free. 
this one here, sort of free, misty forest and mountain. It's not bad. Glacier. Um. Hmm. Let's see. What if we go to this and we say only free clips and we try um, prehistoric? Is there anything in here from prehistoric that's free? Sorry, no clips were found. Such a shark. Prehistoric. These are all expensive ones. And look at nature. Yeah. Only free clips. All right, I think I found one I want. This one here. Light rays over a green hillside. How do I credit the author? Author Beachfront. So which one was this? Author Beachfront. Author Beachfront. I'll have to put in if in fact that is says that Evo, you must credit the author using all projects and media. So the author is where do I find it? Where do I find it? Authors Vidivo. It's the Vidivo team. All right, well, I guess that's who it is. I'll have to say author Vidivo. And maybe what I'll do here to give credit is I will capture this author Vidivo. And oops, that's not a good one. Go like that. And I will save it as. Author Vivo, and by having that, <clears throat> that one there, I open my folder, I snip it out of here, I go into the folder I'm using, and paste it into there, and then I can go into Blend not Blender, I'm not in Blender anymore. And here, and then I can drag the clip in. And so that can come underneath. There we go. And I got to put that author attribution in there. So it should be under A for, oh, I didn't even bring it in yet. So bring it in, and close that, close that, and close that, open that. Author attribution, drop it in, and bring it over here. Oh, didn't mean to drag you. That's why you need to lock this sometimes. Where did it go? Where's my video? There it is. So click on it now. I can drag it. And let's just put it down here. Right. And looks better over here. You say to credit, so we credit him. Okay, there's a credit there. The stasis of the past few... Oops. Yeah. 
All right, the author shows up. It has to last, obviously, the length of the clip, so bring it down and associate it with the clip. I don't know if you can group things in here. Yes, you can. So group, now they're always together. That was the stasis of the past few thousands of years, the equilibrium of the thinking out loud epics of human history. All right, so. The stasis of the past few thousands of years, the equilibrium. All right, so. Thinking out loud epics of human history. Might as well keep the saltation there. Years, the equilibrium of the thinking out loud epics of human history was punctuated with an exclamation point. An evolutionary saltation. That's the other one I want. Evolutionary saltation. So, annotations. Might as well put this one over on this side. I'll keep the boo. Woohoo. I'll close this locket. I'll keep the purple because it looks nice against the green. And I will put in evolutionary saltation in quotes. And then put a definition, a leap. A quantum leap in genetic change. That way, the definition is there. And I don't have to say it because it's on the screen. Oh, and evolutionary saltation. Evolutionary saltation. And let's make that use a behavior that jumps in, jump and fall, because it means saltation means to jump. Evolutionary saltation was taking place. Oops, let's bring it back that way. An evolutionary saltation was taking place that would truly bring story. Seems to take a lot of memory when it does that. Bounce in during. I don't want it to do anything during. So put none and let it bounce out. An evolutionary saltation was taking place that would truly bring stories told about history and stories told from fantasy to life. It also contained not a few question marks. With a okay, now that an image ended here. Maybe I'll say no. It ends. It contained not a few question marks. Yeah, we can't extend that because it's that's about as far as it goes. Marks. With a but we can fade it out. And actually, we'll fade it into something else. Let's see what he talks about. Pictures, the possibility for propaganda also became clear to many. Ah, propaganda. Background for propaganda. What can we use as a background for propaganda? Certainly, oh, there's a white Buddha statue. Hey, that's not a bad idea. Probably go from the forest to a religious figure that represents propagation, religion, propaganda. So we'll have that be the background. And does this have attribution? It's the same author. The attribution license. And come on. Just let it download. And uh, now that we have it, we've just got to go to it and take it, go to the folder, and cut it. And paste it in the appropriate folder. And then bring it in. Oops. Bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. And where did it come? Sometimes what you can do to make it easier to view these things is sort by 
state and then hmm. yeah where did it go in that case let me go to view and let me go to details and there's author video date hmm maybe it didn't get done I thought I pasted it in let's try again paste pasting here come on let me paste let me paste huh that's weird videos I had downloads and it, I cut it and I pasted it so where did it end up this one here is it this one Nope. Let's, let's go to date and digital planet drone. There it is. There should be that one. Glorify. Yep. All right. So we'll take that and drop that in. And drag it down. Yeah, sometimes it gets you start getting memory big when you're using all these high definition shots. There we go. And bring it down to here. And if I ungroup this, by the way, open group. We see that this can be actually stretched out, except it can't stretch it out. <laughs> Open group. Take this, copy it, and paste it. There we go. And then our attribution can go in there too. And I can take this and this, and I can make them the same length. And then I should be able to group them together. Yeah, okay. With the development of moving pictures, the possibility for propaganda. Okay, the possibility for propaganda. So let's ripple this. Let's not do that. So let's page roll this. Let's see what that does. Question marks. With the development of moving pictures. Mm, don't like that. Let's go for a dissolve. With the development. And then dissolve when they have a group, it's not so good. So let me ungroup these. Oh, I see why, because they're not perfectly matched. So we have to make sure they match up. There we go. If they don't match up, you can't do the transition. However, now I can put in the dissolve. A few question marks. I think we can put in the dissolve. Yeah, one blends into the other. All right, and at that point of that transition, let me now group these. Just, uh, oops. Hang on a memory here. Now group them. Yeah, and so with that dissolved, I should also cut me. And then on the next frame, which I can also do a dissolve over, I can move me to another place, which would be over here, so that we can better appreciate the Buddha. All from fantasy to life. It also contained not a few question marks. With the development of moving pictures, the possibility for propaganda. It should be over here, actually. Stories told from fantasy to life. It also can. Uh, what's going on here that makes this so kludgy? 
development of moving pictures, the possibility for propaganda also became clear. All right, possibility for propaganda. And I think what we would put here is see if they have, and I'll leave this open. <clears throat> Let's go for Reifenstahl Propaganda. Put in there we go. Both of those pictures. So this one here we will capture. Let's say Eifenstahl Heights. And the other one is. Save image as and call that Eifenstahl Hitler. And then let's come in here and let's go to media and we can add that media. I'm going to details and date. There's Eifenstahl and there's Eifenstahl Hitler. Bring them both in our bin. And then we should find it under Eifenstahl and bring Eifenstahl in here on this side of the Buddha. And then bring Eifenstahl Hitler in over here. And we can even angle this a little to make it sort of avant-garde. Do the same thing here. Right. Let me say... The possibility for propaganda also became clear to many who were interested in promoting their own visions of the world and wanted to force others to conform. Adolf Hitler... So I think what we'll do here, actually, to the surprise reveal would be Adolf Hitler. So let's keep Eifenstahl there, and let's go... Propaganda. And let's take the fade here, and take the fade here. It also became clear to many who were interested in promoting their own visions of the world and wanted to force others to conform. Adolf Hitler's early job was as a propagandist. Hitler's early job was as a propagandist, and he excelled at it. To counter the Nazi propaganda war machine, Disney and his team were hired by the U.S. Okay. And I think another thing that would be helpful in there is to have that picture from Eifenstahl's, Eifenstahl's Triumph of the Will, uh, her propagandist film, and pop that over where we had Eifenstahl. And people who know it would, of course, be able to relate to it. So. We'll put that. We can hit the shift key and squeeze it and make it bigger. And then rotate it like we had the other one. And that's for trying for the will. So this would have a transition also. Okay. Come on. 
Keeper. Hmm. Let's start. No, I wonder why. It's like it's stuck. Something weird's going on. Force others to conform. Adolf Hitler's early job was as a propagandist, and he excelled at it. To counter the Nazi propaganda war machine, Disney... So that's where Disney comes in. Keep that fade out of here. And then um, we need Disney... Disney War Propaganda Cartoons. And Mando Duck. That's a good one because it has Hitler with Donald Duck right there. So. Fierce face. Donald gets drafted. I see. Yeah, but uh, I want just the picture. So. There, yeah, that's good. Pure shit. So use that one. Except that's a web P. So. That one there. It's also a web P. When that happens, I tend to go and use my snipping tool. And save it. Okay. Pure's face. Now, come up here and find it. Add it. Here's face. And now grab it and put it in here. And two transitions. This team were hired by the US military. Right. This big guy. Team were hired by the U.S. military to make their own counter propaganda films using emotive music and sound effects and animation and every literal and. And I can't say that I'm getting some of that music in there, can I? So maybe there is a clip that we can use. Let's see. Disney propaganda. That's the one there. In time of war, it's. Then the poor says he is the. I in her God in face. Is he not the Superman? The Iowa! Well, that's the section that would be good. So, let me stop this. The Iowa! The Iowa! The Iowa! The Iowa! The Iowa! The The Iowa! The Iowa! The Iowa! The the higher, higher, like in her gable's face. Then her Doreen says, they'll never bump this place. The higher, higher, like in her Doreen's face. Is we not the Superman? Are you a pure Superman? Yeah, we is the Superman. Super, super, Superman. Is this Nazi 
So we've captured that, we pull that in, and let's see, the gag is the one where they bang into each other, so we'll take that, bring that over here, and see. Using a lot of music and sound effects and animation and everything. Bring it behind me, so it looks like it's playing in a movie theater, that's pretty good. Using a and then we'll take the audio and edit it and add an audio point here and an audio point here. Bring the overall level down. This will have to fade up. Let's see from there. And the films using a mode of music and sound. We of course need a transition. So we need a fade there, fade up. This fade out. Let's do that. Popping out the films using a mode of music and sound effects and animation and every little figurative bell and whistle that Hollywood could provide. Later, Disney was hired by the government using a mode of music and sound effects and animation and every little figurative bell and whistle. And that's a little still too loud. Hollywood could provide. Okay, we'll go from Zeke Heil to there, and we'll cut it there, get rid of the rest of this. Later, Disney was hired by the government to... So we'll have later, Disney was hired by the government. We'll let that actually fade out into there. And get into... Nuclear power with the... And get into nuclear power. So we will ah we already have those images. So somewhere in the media bin, if I look in here, I have the mighty atom somewhere. Where do I have it? This one here. Right. Our friend the atom by Walt Disney. And let me bring that down and make a transition here. Same techniques, and we all know how that. Now, what's weird here is that it should have this should have gone in front of. Why is it not? Why is it not transparent? Oh, because it's blocking it. Right, it's a whole... No, no, that doesn't work. Ah, because we haven't got... No, I can't really say why. If I bring it above me... Ah, then it comes in like that. So this would be... I do like this movie screen thing. Later, Disney was hired by the government to promote things like nuclear power. So that's there. To promote things like nuclear power with the same techniques. And we all know how Madison Avenue techniques. Same techniques. Now here I'm going to cut this because I want to play a clip in here. So I'm going to take that whole thing and move it over. And I have in my media bin the Adam, Disney Adam clip that I took. So that the mighty atom is somewhere here. here it is. Alright, so this piece of our friend the atom, the mighty atom, we're gonna take a section of. So you can see in the original Blender file that I did, I did uh, C 
somewhere in here, I had put in our friend the atom. Where did I put that? That was right in here. There it is. So that's how I had. It's small. You know, it's small it's small 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 so I'd started this clip out. And let's go a little bigger. And then find this. Because we certainly aren't going to use the whole thing. We're going to use the section. Let me put the playhead where I want it to be. This we have to move still further out of the way. And I finished all is there. And let's see where I from the apples. And we'll fade me in and out over this. So we'll put this big. And to promote things like nuclear power with the same techniques. All right, and we'll come in here. And of course, we want this to be full screen when it plays. So again, hold the shift key down. Um, we don't need this to be that long anymore. Goes to there. And the part that we want is so the section I want is from the cow right into here. So I'll snip this here, delete that, bring this over, and let's see, probably a little more like, oops, I blew it. So let me go over here to where it ends, and let's see. And take this and what we had to there. I shouldn't have taken that out. That was supposed to be a fade. So now that I've put that in, I'm meant to promote things like nuclear power with the same techniques. So the atom so creates, creates more food for our ever-growing ever population. population. And, these and these same rays, rays are, the are the tools of atomic, of atomic medicine. medicine. And then we'll have it fade out. Tools of atomic medicine. And fade into what's left of the video of the lecture. Which we will move down. And... A lot more of this lecture to go. Yes, video. Tools of atomic, of atomic medicine. medicine. And we all know how that. I'm going to take both of these, and actually, that one I can keep. I'm going to bring this. I want it to be on top, actually. I want this to be, let's see, I kind of like the idea of it fading in over me, like that. And we all know how that is. Of course, the audio has to go out, <clears throat> so we're going to write, edit audio, and put an audio point here. And an audio point here. Bring it down before the next take. But when it comes in, we will add a transition out and a transition of this guy fading in and this fading out. And make this fade over that. And we all know how Madison, Madison Avenue, Avenue. Avenue. But we want to get Madison Avenue in here. 
and we'll put this underneath down on track three. Now take that and stretch it. And put in the transition here. Atomic Medicine. We all know how Madison Avenue used moving pictures and jingers to create a consumer culture of shoppers who. After seeing the latest cereal or soap or automobile advertisement, felt they just had. So. Advertisement. Just seen the latest advertisement, so we'll take that and take this and cut it. So I'm going to bring this back down where it belongs. That track. Seen the latest cereal or soap or automobile advertisement? Don't they just have to? And then move this over and put in my sugar bear. Where's my sugar bear? There it is. Nope, that's right from style. Come on, sugar bear, where are you? Somewhere in here, I got me a sugar bear commercial. If I had a sugar bear commercial, where did it go? Have to find my sugar bear. Is it this one here? Nope. Or maybe it is. Oh, vintage. There it is. Vintage 1960s. So that's the commercial. And what part do I want? I want Sugar Bear toward the end when Sugar Bear cereal comes up. There we go. That's the part I want. So I'm going to clip this, get rid of the rest of it, bring this over, and it's sugar sweet. Make this big. It's sugar sweet. Now let's see, is there, can I make this any farther before the audio comes in? Advertise Not nope, too much. Still that bit of audio there that we don't want to hear. Booties, Granny. Booties, Granny. It's sugar it's sweet. Sugar sweet. And here, I think I have to move the one at the end. <clears throat> I should actually bring this up. And then bring this in. Sure knows how to start a little bit better there. Sure knows how to start a Sure knows. Who knows? Yeah. Sure knows how to start a Yeah. Sure knows how to start a day. What's the line here? Is it sugar bear? Where does that come from? And now we can take transitions here. Pick our madman. Let's 
fade them out and fade this out here. You've seen the latest serial or soap or automobile advertisement. Nice to see ya. Nice to see ya. Sure knows how to start his day a little bit better. That's your booty, Granny. It's sugar sweet and honey flavored wheat, so it keeps me going strong. Thanks, Granny. Can't get enough of that sugar crisp. He could have gotten sugar crisp in post tens too. Post tens has all the cereals kids want. Just had. Post tens has all the cereals kids want. They just had to have whatever they saw and heard on the screen. Actually, that's the piece that that should go out to. So, really, this should move out. That was a mistake on my part. Felt they just had to have whatever they saw and heard on the screen. Nice, guys. That's a better one. And we can bring this out. And sometimes it's hard to get those transitions ours in there. So we'll just drop it in again. this out to here. Again, hard to get that, ah, hard to get the transition. Get this sometimes, there we go. Oh, er, there. So let's see how that plays. Are the tools of atomic medicine? And we all know how Madison Avenue used moving pictures and jingles to create a consumer culture of shoppers who. That Adam picture. Should have transitioned a little bit longer over that. These same rays are the tools of atomic medicine. And we all know how Madison Avenue used moving pictures and jingles to create a consumer culture of shoppers who, after seeing the latest cereal or soap or automobile advertisement, felt they just had to have whatever they saw and heard on the screen. Nice to see ya. Sure knows how to start his day a little bit better. That's your booty, Granny. It's your... It's your... With this lecture, we see how filmmakers and educators have been at times empowered and at times disempowered to serve or reject. Okay, so here we need something about filmmakers. And <clears throat> what do we have in the way of this one here? This is a nice one. So let's put that in the background. Let's bring it all the way down to the bottom of the floor here. And put in a transition. So that comes in. And I think that's as big as it gets. So we'll have to copy it and paste it. We don't want the um, transition in between those. Copy and paste. Let's see how far this takes us. With this lecture, we see how filmmakers and educators have been at time. Now, we can take this guy now because we've jumped around. I would like to see him on the other side. Or either I move him or what I can do is keep him in place but flip this around. So flip this around in the y-axis by 180. Let's see how that looks. 
With this lecture, we see how filmmakers and educators. Oh, didn't do it. Why? That from there. Ah, because it's supposed to be done on all of them. Thanks. 180. This one here is not 180. This one is not 180. Yeah, this one's got to be 180 also. That's weird. This one has to be 180. And that means this one has to be 180. With this lecture, we see how filmmakers and educators. I do think that this needs to be brought back a little bit. Because it should be on the part of the fade out. That fade there. That's where it should start to come in. Let's put that that way. There we go. We'll reject the agendas of power holders. And students learn how they too, you too, can harness that power for, for fighting against the war or fight. Okay, well there, we have a problem in Houston, so I have to go back because I love the lines. With this lecture. Enjoy with this lecture, so we can get rid of all this by cutting it and deleting it. It's supposed to delete, but it's not deleting. Why? With this lecture. memory problems big time here but With this lecture, we see how filmmakers and educators have been at times empowered and at times disempowered to serve or reject the agendas of power holders. And students learn how you too can harness that power. I like the YouTube can harness that power. So, you. We'll add this and say you too. And in that you too marker. I will put in an uh, annotation and say it like this. I want it to be facing that way. I like it up there in that blackish area. You too can harness that power. Um, <clears throat> I wonder if we have any other fonts in here. Like, I'd love it if we had comic. Do we have a comic font? Under C O uh, Mix Sons. There we go. So, will it let us use it? Keeps jumping back to Montserrat. Why is that? Hmm. Doesn't like any of them? Even like Century Gothic? Doesn't like anything, huh? Yeah, what if we erase it and now change it to comic songs? Well, I guess it doesn't do it at all. So what do you miss with that? Themes, manage themes. Well, subtitle, theme default. 
simply add a theme and call it comic. And then the foreground is there, but what's the annotation background? Rename, well, how do I? Oh, I guess it won't let me. Give me background theme manager, but it doesn't let me change. Let's see if it let me change. Comic. Comic font. Aha. Good. Font 2. We don't like Montserrat at all. I wish there was another comic font. But I'll use elephant as my second logo. I don't need a logo. Font colors, foreground, background. I'll just save it and uh, select theme, comic. There we go. I don't like my color though, but at least my font will be in there, right? You too. Ah, why did it go back to to Montserrat when I don't want Montserrat? What is wrong with this? I want it to give up in a second if it's not working. It's supposed to work. It jumped right the heck back. Select theme, comic. That would work then. You too. What's the words? Do can harness that harness power, that power or, fight or fight against its effects. You too can harness that power. Well, that is the comic font, although I don't really like color here. So I'm going to bring the color to a you know, something like that. Not a solid, but a gradient. There we go. A little bit blue sky there. Well, you too can harness that power, that power or fight or against fight it. Effects. But oh. Fighting what? You two can harness that power. And it's as loud as I can make it. What is that? It's in the script here. In the script it says power. It's one part of power. You two can harness that power to fight against its effects. Here. Oh, uh, can the effects. I'm going to change this to harness the power. Telling. Media creation. So try to get propaganda effects. Right. You too can harness that power, that power or fight or against its effects. But most importantly, through historical context, we want to empower you to harness or fight against its effects. But most importantly, through historical context, we want to... You too can harness that power or fight against its effects. But most importantly, through historical context, we want to empower you to harness these techniques to spread your message hopefully of substance sustainability, to an ever wider public. 
Our first. Our first Our first reading touches on a point I've made often before, but want to re-emphasize everything. <laughs> 